Well, it's been a while since I've made an update video on my rack, and I'm also a little late to the party. So, Broadcom recently acquired VMware, which is uh, very unfortunate. And because Broadcom kind of sucks, I guess? I don't know. Um, the uh, days of ESXi being free are now gone. I am a little bummed I wasn't smart enough to grab a license for version 8, but it's whatever. Currently, um, top three servers are running various versions of ESXi that I have uh, licenses for. And the top server is eventually going to get replaced with my R730 if I ever get around to it. I need to make an iSCSI target for that box and then back the VMs up to it before I move the hard drives into my new server. Or, well, solid state drives, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be a bit of an endeavor. I'm really bummed, though, about ESXi going away. Um, I really liked it. I felt like it was fairly easy to use and made a lot of sense with the interface. It did suck not having access to the most basic things like automated backups. And I'm sure there's other management tasks that I can't do that I would, would love to be able to do. Well, there is um, vMotion would be kind of fun to have. I'm kicking around the idea of going Proxmox, but I don't have any experience with that yet. And I just don't have time to learn it. So... There's a very high chance that I'm just going to move those drives into the new server, install VMware, and just get it going again. We'll see what happens. I did try virtualizing Proxmox, but there's something wrong with it and it doesn't work, so I don't know what's going on. I'm going to have to install it on bare metal and um, play with that. But um, there's some stuff in the rack that I need to deal with. Um, I think... No, it's not angry right now. I think if I remember right, this battery backup has two different problems. It thinks the batteries are dead, which... Mm, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's angry because the batteries in there are getting old. I think they're pushing two years. But this one doesn't seem to care when it does a self-test. Also, the management card in this died. I don't know why. I need to probably do a full power cycle of the card, see if it comes back to life. If memory serves correct, the management cards and these are hot swappable, uh, but not interchangeable. Um, so if I remember correctly, I did try pulling the card out of that one and then putting it back in, but it's still not showing up on my network and I don't know why. There is a possibility that it lost its settings maybe, but I think that's saved in flash, not in RAM. Um, there's a clock battery, I believe, in the management card, so maybe that could have gone bad. Uh, I don't foresee changing out this R720 anytime soon. Uh, same with my third R720, which is basically for testing purposes. I may, if anything, change out the RAID controller so I can support, um... 4K in formatted drives uh, to put bigger drives in them. As it is, going to the R730 is going to be overkill anyways because these servers are literally doing nothing. I'm not even sure why this one's pulling 210 watts right now. <laughs> oh man. Especially when the one below is pulling 168. Oh, that's probably idle power for the GPU. But uh, yeah. This thing I should have sold a year ago or so, but one of the nodes died, and um, yeah, I kind of screwed myself there. Don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. Um, I don't remember the model number was anymore. I think it's the C6320 four-node server. It's fairly well configured, but I don't know. It's dead. Well, one of the nodes is dead, so yeah. Don't know why. Never figured out why. The uh, networking... So one thing I've never understood, and I've just kind of done it because it's what everyone else does. Why is all this in the front? Actually, I might keep the router up front just because I like to look at the uh, front display. Um, but like, there's no good reason for networking stuff to be on the front. But everyone does it. 
Um, at least home lab stuff. I think some of the data centers, they actually do put the switches in the back of the, the rack. But I want to move this switch and that switch to the back of my rack. I'm still trying to decide on 10 gig if I want to go SFP or RJ45. Um, one thing that would be nice is if... Hmm, I don't know what I want to do. I really like my Juniper switch, my EX3348P. It's a great switch, very reliable, easy to use. I'm not doing anything fancy with it, so... Uh, yeah. But I have an Arista 10 gig RJ45 switch, or I have some various Cisco SFP Plus switches that are uh, 10 gig with uh, additional 40 gig uplinks. So I don't know what I'm going to do with those yet. I also keep kicking around the 40 gig networking just for the fun of it. Really, I have no good reason. Also, I have some R820s with a big pile of 32 gig DDR3 sticks that I lost my ass on thanks to eBay. Never going to be able to sell them or break even on them even. So that was big, big hit. So I'm thinking maybe I build out an R820 with uh, quad CPUs and one and a half terabytes of RAM. For the fun of it, I'd love to find a real use case for it, but it's probably going to be for the fun of it, because it's either that or the 32 gig sticks are just going to collect dust forever and piss me off thinking about them. Uh, this uh, auto transfer switch, which might not be visible because of the lighting. There we go. Um, I want to get this hooked up. I need to rewire the plugs. I need to put plugs on that I can use. I believe this is rated for 20 amps originally. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, I need to find some better plugs. I'm not too happy with how these are. They're barely on there because the cord's so thick. But I want to start using that with some of this stuff that doesn't have redundant power supplies like my uh, networking gear. So that would be nice to have. Because um, one thing right now I have been avoiding is I don't want to have to unplug stuff um, that isn't on redundant power supplies if I want to like do uh, like recabling or whatever. So having these on something that I can keep power on, but switch circuits around and stuff would be nice. Eventually I'm going to get that integrated at least, is the plan. As for the back of the rack, I already do have some switches. These are both 48-port uh, PoE gigabit switches. These are where they are because, well, it's closer to my patch panel, and I didn't want to buy cables, uh, network cables. And those network cables I'm using actually worked out pretty nice. There's a little bit of chaos going on here. There is a method to the madness, but I kind of forgot what it was. I think, um, I think one of these patch panels that I pulled off of, I did uh, the patch panel ports one through 24 on the switch, and then the other panel would have been, um, well, technically zero through 23, and then 24 through 47. Um, but yeah, these switches aren't even really being utilized that much. A little bit more connected than I thought, actually. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I basically wanted to have all the network ports in my office be connected to the network and ready with the option for PoE power. I do wish that... Um, these had 10 gig uplinks, but unfortunately they don't because they are EX2200-48P-4G. I think that's right. Yeah. Um, so they don't have any 10 gig uplinks. I think I could do link aggregation or something with these uh, ports to get me more network speed. But right now they're not doing anything. I have a few things that are security cameras, basically. 
and they're not pushing that much bandwidth at 1080p. But some of my stuff, I believe, is actually running through these for like my office. Uh, my personal office, that is. I do want to get 10 gig going to my personal office, which the easiest way to do that's probably going to be RJ45. I believe some of these cables. Oh, yeah, I don't remember. This is kind of a mess, but I think I think I ran some Cat6 cables to my office for some additional lines. It's such a short run that I don't think it'll matter anyways. I only want the 10 gig for video editing off the NAS, but we'll see what happens there. I may not pursue that because of financial reasons. Um, because I need to figure out the cabling, the network card, and I need to get a better motherboard because my current motherboard doesn't have anything other than a single X16 slot. But yeah, basically I think I'm going to work towards having more than networking on this side of the rack. I don't know about positioning yet and placement and all that, so that'll be a fun mystery. This is the back side of that four node server. And this server, or this node is dead. It just, it, it turns on, but it doesn't do anything. So, that's whatever. And then, uh, yeah, I've got my nice little mess here on my cable management arms. Won't be adding too much more to this. Um, yeah, I can't think of much else I really need other than just stuff to screw around with. If I can get my hands on bigger drives, uh, that'd be the biggest thing. I don't know why that one's not lit up. That's weird. It must not be plugged in. Oh, where's the... Yeah, I can't tell where the thing goes. It's probably not plugged in. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm pretty bummed about ESXi not being free anymore. Well, not even being offered. Broadcom took away all the keys, so I can't even go to my uh, page that had my licenses that I, I had, so that's nice. Another reason I hate Broadcom. Uh, and apparently they are the reason why PLX chips are so expensive and hard to come by, which is why we need bifurcation for the NVMe cards. And um, I never liked Broadcom wireless cards. They kind of sucked. I like the Intel ones. They have always been better. But, I don't know. Bit of a ramble. Hopefully that was interesting. And, uh, hopefully I'll have an update on the rack here in the near future. So, thanks for watching.